Welcome to part two of our demo. In this demo, we will demonstrate how we can build a Docker image using an existing Windows web app developed with the .NET Core Razor Pages framework. This app also uses SQLite for the backend database. For those who are not familiar, Razor Pages were introduced in .NET Core 2.0 and provides enhancements over the traditional MVC. Once we build the Docker image for our Windows app, we will build a Kubernetes YAML file around this app and deploy it to the Windows 2019 Kubernetes worker node we created in part one of this demo. We will then use Kubernetes API to manage this Windows app. I will start this demo by cloning the GitHub repository maintained by Patrick Lane. Patrick is the co-chair of the Windows 6 working group along with Michael Michael from VMware. There are a few apps in this repo. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Razor Pages movie app. This particular app has already been containerized, but uh, it's using an older version of the .NET Core. So to make this app work, work with Windows 2019, we just need to update our base image to .NET Core 2.2. I can build the Docker image directly from the Git shell. But for better display, I am switching to the PowerShell terminal. To build the image, I simply specify a tag and point to the location of my Docker file, in this case, the current working directory. The amount of time it takes to build a Docker image varies based on the size of the base image and if there's a local cache available from previous builds. Once the image is successfully built and tagged, you can push the image to a upstream registry. Uh, for a simple demo like this, it is not critical which registry you should use. Uh, I'm using Docker in this case, but for production workloads, my personal recommendation is to use Harbor, as Harbor provides notary and the image vulnerability scanning required for enterprise workloads. Once the Docker image is built and uh, pushed to the registry, we are going to create a Kubernetes directory, and in this directory, we're going to create a Kubernetes YAML file. In this YAML file, we will define a deployment, and in the deployment definition, we'll specify the number of replicas. We will define a pod template. In the pod template, we'll point to the Docker image that we just built and pushed to the upstream registry. We will also define resource limits for CPU and memory in the pod template. Lastly, to expose our application for external access, we will need to define a service. Once the YAML file is saved, we are ready to deploy our app. Currently, the cluster is empty and uh, has two worker nodes. And our goal is to deploy the app onto worker node 2, since it's the new node we added in the first part of our demo. There are a number of ways to influence Kubernetes scheduler for node selection. We will use no taint for this demo, but keep in mind there are other ways. Uh, for example, no selector is another common way. We will use kubectl to deploy this movie app, and it's going to create the corresponding deployment and expose the application to the users. Let's check on the pod status, and the pod creation should be relatively fast since our container image is very large. And uh, let me enlarge the screen here so that we can see the output more clearly. And as you can see here, our pod has been in running status and uh, it's been up for 18 seconds. It has an IP address assigned and it's running on the second worker node that we just deployed. Our next step yeah. is to find out how we can access this application. We're using no port, we just figure out uh, which port port 80 maps to. In this case, it's 30664. In a new browser, we can just paste in the IP address along with port 30664 and we can start navigating our application um, using our browser. Let's say a few days later, we are expecting everyone to go out and watch movies. And we can bring back worker node 3 to our scheduler for additional capacity. And to do this, we simply add a minus sign next to the no scheduler flag, and worker node 3 will be available immediately following this command. And we can deploy new containers on worker node 3 by simply increasing the number of pod replicas.
Kubernetes deployment scaling, whether it's scaling up or scaling down, is immediate. As you can see, our second newly added Py instance is already in running status. And uh, we can see that it is running on workload row number three. And uh, if two replicas are not sufficient, we can increase to three replicas. And finally, if the added capacity is no longer required, you can drop the number of replicas back to one. This concludes our demo. Thank you so much for watching our video. We look forward to work with you on your journey towards cloud native for your Windows application. Thank you.